Hey, what's going on? Today we'll be focusing on synthesizers and specifically three ways to add some movement and character to your sounds. You should be able to apply this to any synth as long as it has a decent mod matrix or some routing on the front panel. So if you don't have the synth that I got, it's all good. My synth of choice for these explainer type videos is of course the Novation Peak. It's laid out well, has a ton of control right on the face of the unit. Yes. I do work there, I work at Novation, but no, this isn't sponsored by Novation. And no, I'm not getting paid overtime for this video. I just happen to like this synth a lot. This video is, however, sponsored by Squarespace, but more on them later. All right, movement characteristic tip numero uno, wiggle them wave shapes. You can do this, of course, with en envelopes or LFOs. They get familiar with those too. They will easily become your best friend when it comes to sound design. And if you want to learn more about envelopes, watch me care way too much about them in this video right here. Okay, let's start with an initialized patch and focus on the envelopes first. So initialize patch, we just got this sawtooth here, right? So by default, you should have like a shape amount or a shape knob or in a lot in a lot of cases, this ends up going in with the pulse width, right? Or a square wave, you can change the square waves width. But if you have something with digital wave shapes like this or the Syntact or um, even like a Pro 3 or some of the Korg stuff has this too, you'll have more wavetable-y sounds, right? So we can find, I don't know, E-piano, sure. But for demonstration purposes only, let's stick with a sign, right? So we don't get too lost. So what's cool here is I can say envelope, mod envelope one, which is right here on the face of the unit, right? How much do I want to affect my wave shape? Because I can move it around manually, but I can also apply mod envelope one, either positive or negative. And this will add so much movement to a sound. So I've turned this up already. And but turn it up and you might not hear anything if you're holding the note down. That's because in mod envelope one, our sustain is probably really low. It was set to 35. Our sustain will be the max amount of, um, max, um, max amount of depth, I guess, to be applied to our wave shape. In this case, I can use the sustain to find the sweet spot that I want to hear. Maybe I want it to land right there, right? Now I'll give myself a little bit of attack, a little bit of a decay. So now when I press a single note, you can hear it kind of slowly works its way up to that point. And what's cool is because this is a polyphonic synthesizer, each voice has its own mod envelope that's mo doing that movement to it. You can hear that they kind of come up and out by themselves. Take, if you want to take this a step further, this is where it gets cool. If you go negative, and you can find, sometimes you can find these really weird sweet spots where it goes through a very almost wave foldy audible change back into something more normal. So let's try and find that now. It's gonna start. Let's start here, right? And we'll go negative. So see, it's gonna end up being pretty normal again. We'll add a little bit of attack. Here, it's kind of whips back down. That's because there's no decay, right? And I'm not sure if you can hear this, if I turn our release up of our amp envelope, it's like That's because our release of mod envelope one going to our shape amount is whipping it back to the starting point. This sounds ridiculous to say, but the two most important things to remember with envelopes is where they start, especially modulation envelopes, where they start and what their peak is no pun intended, but what the max amount of depth is being applied to what? And in this case, it's our sustain. Because after our sustain, when we let go, how quickly does that release whip back down 
to that open sound, right? We can give it a little bit of release, so it kind of wah, right? Again, this is all per voice. It's kind of a trippy way to play things. This adds so much movement and we're just working with a single oscillator and one mod envelope going to the wave shape amount. Next up, we'll be messing with the mixer section and oscillator volumes. I love either a slow attack um, on an envelope moving the oscillator volumes or in some cases like a rhythmic LFO, which kind of tricks you into thinking like you have two patches playing at once. And by the way, is it envelope or envelope? I feel like I jump back and forth and I'm never confident with my answer. <laughs> so uh, let me know down below, I, I really don't know. So we're still with this patch here, right? But let's say we wanted to add another oscillator at a higher register. Pretty cool, right? But let's actually make this cool, not pretty cool. We'll go to our mod envelopes, or our mod matrix, I should say. What's gonna be our destination? In this case, our destination is gonna be oscillator to level. Right now we have it set to direct, which will just send a direct amount to that parameter. If I turn up the depth, this is gonna allow me to find, kind of find like the sweet spot of where I want it to land, right? And once I've done that, I can then go and select which LFO I want. In this case, I want LFO2, which is this LFO here, but only positive. And I'll set this to sync. And then I'll set it to a down ramp. If you wanted to take this a bit further, some LFOs have like a fade amount or a slew time or um, a delay on when they start playing after the key trigger, right? In this case, we got a fade time, so I'll turn that up. And that's just going to fade in the amount of its uh, depth going to its destinations, if that makes sense. You'll hear it here, watch. It takes a second for it to come in. there's two patches playing at once and of course you can get weird with this and do some similar stuff like to the movement we have here I can say mod envelope one go a little negative to our sawtooth and let's see what that sounds like Hear how much it changes go into a wavetable spin this thing into whatever Sounds way crazy, right? So I'm gonna take this back to a sawtooth here and this is what we're at now. But let's take this a little further, right? And we'll use mod envelope two, which I believe, I don't think it's routed to anything right now. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to say, let's change oscillator three's level, right? With mod envelope two. We're going to pulse width. decent amount, and that's going to be mod envelope 2. See how it disappears? If I move mod envelope 2, there we go, we're using that sustain again. So what's cool is we're using mod envelope 2 to lift or raise the volume of oscillator 3. The same can be said in reverse, which is we can use mod envelope two to lower the volume of oscillator one. To do that, again, oscillator one level, how much? And turn it down. And again, mod envelope two. hear them 
crisscross there at the end. Crisscross. But we don't have to be that dramatic, right? These are all just different ideas of how we can use this. Use these for different movement. Put a little reverb on here, a little chorus. Or we set this to sine wave, really high up. Say we wanted LFO1 to add a little bit of shape movement, and we'll sync that one up too. So what's the rate of this? We're at 16th. We can set this to an eighth. So now it's moving rhythmically. Some Sakamoto for you. That is just a lot of fun to mess around with because you start hearing where these sounds start coming in and out and kind of fighting for dominance and all this stuff. And then you run this through a compressor or some more effects and more reverb and there's just so much movement. I mean, a few minutes ago, we were just on an initialized patch and if I wasn't talking so much, we could have moved so much further. But again, right now we're using three oscillators, which is honestly kind of rare that I use because it just ends up being such a thick sound and I even started turning up the ring mod but there's just a ton of movement and modulation that you can add. So I'm gonna just dial this back a little bit. And actually, you know what, really quick, before we take this patch up one more level, let me give a quick shout out to my favorite place to host my website, and of course, the sponsor of today's video, Squarespace. In case you're not familiar with Squarespace, it's an incredibly easy to use, all-in-one website designer and hosting platform, and honestly, so much more. I've been using Squarespace for years, even before I had this YouTube channel. It's currently where I host all of my merch, like my hats, my shirts, my sample packs, synth presets. I mean, I can just keep going on and on. Basically, it's never been easier to get a professional looking website within a few clicks at such an affordable price. And some of my favorite features on Squarespace are the customized email links that expire within 24 hours when someone purchases it after it's been emailed to them. So when you're selling digital goods like music or videos, it's, uh, it really comes in handy so you're not chasing links. The website builder as well with gorgeous templates to choose from that you can tweak and really personalize and customize. For example, I'm using the Event Horizon template and with a few tweaks and added pages, I was easily able to make it feel like my own. And trust me, I'd never be able to make a website look this good on my own. And lastly, all the extensions and integrations Squarespace has with third-party companies that help facilitate your shipping, product design, fulfillment, taxes, and so much more. You can even connect your Instagram to start selling things from there, leading others back to your site, tie that in with another third party that makes the product and ships it to them. It's crazy how simple Squarespace makes it. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in starting a site and taking your music or your artistry to the next level, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash rickytines to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, let's get back into it. So lastly, this of course is an easy one, but make sure you don't get lazy like I do and put your amp envelope on double duty to open your filter as well. If your synth has a separate mod envelope or a filter envelope, use it and pair it up with an LFO to get some really cool movement. Or if your LFO has a fade option, like we mentioned before, use that too. So check this out. We'll just go back to an initialized patch. This patch has actually gone a little too far, right? So we're here, really simple. We'll give ourselves a little bit of a release. Turn our filter down. Cool. By default, I could just turn up the amp envelope to the filter. But what sucks here is every time I change the amp character, it's gonna change the way the filter moves too, which can be useful, right? But what if we wanted no attack and we wanted the filter to stay closed for a little while and then eventually open up? That's where mod envelope one comes in or a filter envelope. 
something as simple as that, like, watch, listen to this. We'll just do all this slammed and a little bit of decay. Without this. Cool, but it just takes away a little bit of the bite. Right, or we go negative, turn this up. A bit of attack. And now our sustain, because it's negative, is actually closing the filter. Turn this way up. Starts high, comes down low. And when I let go, opens back up. Crazy. It just almost sounds like a weird delay. And one thing I learned from having my Ober Oberheim expander for a while was allowing the envelopes to have a delay. Peak originally didn't come with envelope delays, but I begged them to put it in there and eventually we got them in here, right? So what that means is I'll say mod envelope one, give me a delay and it's gonna delay the amount of time for the envelope to actually trigger. So if I turn this up and we make this really drastic and positive, you hear that little pop? Right, that's the delay and that's really fun to use. It sounds like a delay almost. And then if you apply this twice, right, we'll say, we'll go to our filter level frequency by how much, maybe that much, what's gonna be our source, mod envelope two. We'll turn mod envelope two up a little bit on our attack, a little bit more sustain, a little bit of release. And we'll add more, so we're at 58 on mod envelope one, on envelope two, we'll do like a hundred. Let's see what that does. I'll turn this up even more. <laughs> there it is. Way, way, way too late. Let's try this. See? And it'll hold it there because it's polyphonic, right? this in with an LFO with some delay time, or fade time I should say. A lot of fade. More Let's try that. Let's make mod envelope one not as uh, apparent. Now it sounds as if mod envelope one's throwing us into the fade time of LFO one, right? Then LFO two, or mod envelope two. forget too is when I'm designing sounds I always forget to turn the release up to give myself a little more time on all of them that way the sound kind of gets to hang out a little longer with this again this is just a single oscillator on sawtooth let's go to pulse width send that same LFO
mod envelope too, we'll bring that down. Just so things start popping out at us, right? Or really fast. Either way, you know what, that's all I really wanted to talk about today was just... Good to see you. Didn't see you there. Um, where are we at? What time is it? What day is it? Anyway, I appreciate you a lot. Thanks so much for coming by. And uh, yeah, hope to see you again next week. <laughs> I don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, yeah, but until then, you already know the drill, my friend. I'll see you next week. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Super P.